ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَشَرُ الْأُمُونِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam Sheikh Ibn Baz رحمه الله he said من حفظ وقته بذكر الله وقراءة القرآن وصحبة الأخيار والبعد عن صحبة الغافلين والأشرار يطيب قلبه ويلين First and foremost Sheikh Ibn Baz رحمه الله <clears throat> May Allah have mercy on him because of his prudence to sticking firmly to the Quran and the Sunnah and for his care over the affairs of all the Muslims no matter where they came from no matter what color their skin was no matter what language they spoke Because of his concern for the ummah and especially the youth, he gave the best advice and guidance. If you see any books that he authored, purchase them. Because he only brought what came from Allah and his messenger ﷺ. He gave this quote where he said, Whoever preserves his time with the remembrance of Allah, with the recitation of the Qur'an, with accompanying good people, and with maintaining a distance from people who were heedless and evil, then his heart will become good and soft. And as we'll see at the end, it is the heart that Allah is going to look at and question. So taking this phrase, why would he say something like this? Unless these summarized what the person should spend their time in their life doing. So he said, first and foremost, مَنْ حَفِظَ وَقْتَهُ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Whoever preserves his time with the remembrance of Allah, يُطِيبُ قَلْبَهُ وَيَلِينَ His heart will become good and sound. My brothers and sisters in Islam, in Islam we, we never look at time as if it's a valuable. Money is valuable. Our house is tangible, it's valuable. Our car is valuable. We don't look at time. Time is something you can never get back once it passes. You cannot purchase it. You cannot do anything to go back in time. It's valuable. It can benefit you, it can get you in trouble. And Allah swears by it to show you how grand it is. He didn't swear by a dollar, He swore by time. By time, by the ages, by the ages. Swearing by time. Indeed, mankind is truly in a state of loss for the rest of the ayah. Except for those who believe and do righteous deeds and enjoying the truth and enjoying patience. So time is valuable. So we must spend it in the dhikr, the, with the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Allah said, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبُ Allah says what means those who believe in the oneness of Allah and whose hearts find rest 
in the remembrance of Allah, indeed, verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find rest. So many times we forget that we've been given this jewel to cure our heart, to give us patience, to give us peace, to give us happiness. And we look for it in this dunya, in money, in cars, in children, in family, in entertainment, music, the likes of drugs. We look for it anywhere. And we don't realize that Allah gave it to us for free. When you remember Allah, your heart will find rest. Maybe not that time because He wants to test you. But if you continue remembering Allah, Allah will comfort you, comfort you like no other comfort you've ever felt in your life. Allah said, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Allah said, remember me and I will remember you. Allah does not forget. Alhamdulillah, we have a Lord that does not forget. He knows everything. Alim al khabir He knows everything. Yet, if you remember him, he will remember you. He'll remember you in a better place, to better people, to his angels. He will guide you, protect you, comfort you, and console you. And be grateful to me for my countless favors upon you, and never be ungrateful to me. Allah said, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ فَضُرُّعًا وَخِيفَةً وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ بِالْغَدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ وَلَا تَكُونَ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Allah says what means, and remember your Lord by your tongue, speaking it, moving the lips, remembering Allah, so your tongue, your lips, they move, remembering Him, they're moist with that. And within yourself, humbly and, without, and with fear, without loudness in the words, in the mornings and in the afternoons, and be not of those who are neglectful. A command from our Lord, that dhikr, that remembering Him, is something we should be doing at the very least, morning and evening, if not at all times. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sadaq al-mufarradun. He said that the mufarradun have gone ahead. Qalu, wa man mufarradun ya Rasulullah. They said, who are the mufarradun, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, al-dhaakirun Allah kathiran. Those who remember Allah that much, they're plentiful in the remembrance of Allah from the men and the women. These are the ones who have gone ahead, gone ahead in the race. They're pulling closer to the finish line towards Jannah, in front of the other people who are just doing the basics and doing the average because of their dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عن عبد الله بن بشر رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال يا رسول الله إن شراع الإسلام قد كثرت علي. He said عبد الله بن بشر he said one of the companions came to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the شراع the the uh, in, in the uh, injunctions of Islam that have been put upon me are too much give me something that I can follow he said لا يزال لسانك رطب من ذكر الله he said do not let your tongue Become dry from the remembrance of Allah. Meaning, let your tongue be wet, moist with the remembrance of Allah. Always have the remembrance of Allah on your tongues. Always have it. And subhanAllah, if we look, the adhkar, the adriya, the morning and the evening, after every prayer, waiting for the prayer, when it's raining, when it's windy, when you hear thunder, at every moment of time, there's ways to glorify Allah. SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And the likes of them, very easy to say, light on your tongue, heavy on the scales with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al azim Yet we spend our time daydream, daydream, our minds drifting, just thinking about this dunya, how I can make an extra dollar and the likes of those matters. And we're losing out on the greatest things that we can do to please our Lord. Abu Musa, he narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ مَثَلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the similitude of the one who remembers Allah and the one who does not remember Allah is like the living and the dead. The one who remembers Allah, he's alive. The one who doesn't pay attention to Allah, does not remember Allah, does not want Allah on his mind. You might see him walking, running, lifting weights, doing work. He's as good as dead. Because his heart does not have the remembrance of Allah in it. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, radiallahu anhuma, he narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تكثر الكلام بغير ذكر الله فإن كثرة الكلام بغير ذكر الله قسوة للقلب وإن, وإن أبعد الناس من, ال, من الله القلب القاسي 
رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث حسن. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "Do not talk too much without remembering Allah." Every jalsa, even if you're meeting a friend to have a, a quick snack or a lunch or a coffee, every sitting should have the remembrance of Allah. Do not to, talk too much without the remembrance of Allah. Indeed, excessive talking without the remembrance of Allah it hardens the heart. And indeed, the farthest of people from Allah is the one who has the harshest heart, the one who is harsh-hearted. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, rahimahullah, he said, if you could hear the sound of the angels writing down your name from the people of this earth who used to remember Allah, while they're remembering Allah, you would die out of joy. We can't hear it. We don't ever think, I said, subhanAllah, the angel just marked me one good hasanat or ten. I said, alhamdulillah, he marks me again. We're not thinking like that, but if you could hear their pen writing your name down, this one, من الذاك مين الله كثيرا والذاكرات from the male or the female ones who used to remember Allah a lot, you would die out of joy just because the angels, the scribes have written your name down, mentioning it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a witness for you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Shaykh bin Baz then, he went on to say, من حفظ وقته بقراءة القرآن Whoever preserves his time by reciting the Qur'an, يُطِيبُ قَلْبَهُ وَيَلِينَ Then he will, his heart will become good and soft, pure and soft. Again, we're less than 90 days to Ramadan. And we all have in our minds, in our minds that's the month of the Qur'an. This is the book of Allah, the speech of Allah, حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَمْدُودْ مِنَ السَّنَاءِ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ The rope of Allah outstretched from the heavens to the earth. Why do you need to see it to believe it? This is the words of Allah, the last message to all of humanity. Come this way, you'll succeed and go to Jannah. Go that way, the fire will be your destination. Yet we've made it a book specific to a month. It's less than 90 days away. And we always come and we're never prepared for it. We think we are, but we're not. And I remind myself first. But what if you don't reach Ramadan? What if that month that you, we don't get to see it? Then you lose out on the Qur'an being what you base your whole entire life on. And that should be the thought of the Muslim because every day we're warned about death. Every day death should be on our mind from our salah to other than it. And we see it in the news, on the social media. It comes to the good, the bad, the young, the old, the sick, the healthy, the strong, the weak. It comes for whoever Allah sends it to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, Ya ayyuhal nas, قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مِنْ مَوْعِدَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, O oh means, O oh mankind, there has come to you a good advice from your Lord. This Qur'an, it orders you towards what is good, and it forbids you from what is bad and wrong, and evil, and a healing for the disease, the disease of jahil, ignorance of jahiliyyah, the disease of doubt, the disease of, of, of differences and hypocrisy, in your breasts a guidance and a mercy, explaining the halal and haram for the believers. Allah says what means and we send down from the Qur'an that which is a healing, that which is a mercy to those who believe in Tawheed and they act upon it and it increases the zalimun, the polytheists and the wrongers, nothing in nothing but loss. This Qur'an is the healing, it is the guide, it is the protection, it is the comfort that we look far and uh, beyond to find, yet it's right in front of us, right at our fingertips. And Anas ibn Malik, قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ لِلَّهِ أَهْلِينَ مِنَ النَّاسِ Anas ibn Malik narrated that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Allah has special people from mankind. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مَنْ هُمْ they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who are Allah's special people? They didn't ask so they could just know. They asked because they wanted to be from that group. Do you want to be from the special people of Allah? Do you want to be Allah's special group that He refers to? فَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, هُمْ أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ أَهْلُ اللَّهِ وَخَاصَتَهُ He said, they are the people of the Qur'an. They will be the people of Allah, His special ones. And this hadith, we find it as Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah. Imagine to be in the group that Allah calls His special group. The special people from Bani Adam that He calls special because the Qur'an 
was what they revolved their life around. They were the people of the Quran. Meaning, they read it. They memorized it. They studied it. They implemented it. They taught it. And the likes of those matters. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man qara'a ashra ayatin fi layla, lam yuktab min al-ghafileen. This hadith which Shaykh Al-Abdani, he graded it as sahih li ghayrihi, meaning due to some outside evidence, it's sahih, it's acceptable. The Messenger of Allah said, whoever recites 10 verses at night, they will never be recorded, they will never be recorded amongst the negligent. Whoever recites 10 ayat minimum at night time, they will never be regarded or recorded as someone who was negligent with respect to his or her deen. Ikrama he narrated, that Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma qal, Dhamin Allahu liman attaba' al-Qur'an, an la yadillu fi dunya wa la yashqa fi al-akhira, thumma tala faman attaba' hudaya, fala yadillu wa la yashqa. This narration which is in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, Allah has guaranteed for the one who follows the Qur'an, that he will not be led astray in this world, and he will not be cursed in the hereafter. Then he recited the ayah from the Qur'an, from Surah Taha, thus whoever follows my guidance will not be led astray nor cursed. The Qur'an is all we need for success in this life. The Qur'an is all we need for success in the next life. Yet we've made it into one month, or some of us not even that. It's in the, the first week of Ramadan, and then we give up on it. This is the book of Allah, His words, His speech, final message to mankind. To save who? Allah, He saved. He's the first, the last, wal awwal, wal akhir, wal dhahr, wal batin. He doesn't need saving. We're the ones who need saving. And we've been given the recipe, the prescription. Yet we're looking elsewhere for that guidance. Sufyan, he narrated that Uthman, radiallahu anhu, he said, لو أن قلوبنا تهرت ما شبعت من كلام الله in this narration, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he said, if our hearts were pure, we would never be tired from the speech of Allah. If our hearts were pure, really seeking Allah's guidance, really seeking Allah's help, really aiming to glorify our Lord, really thanking Him for the blessings and favors He has bestowed upon us, then we would never be tired from the speech of Allah. Yet to many of us, you do 10-15 minutes and... Oh, I've done a lifetime, but we'll spend hours on TV, hours on entertainment, hours on TikTok, hours on Instagram, and all the other things that distract us from this. The speech of Allah is the guidance. It's the healing, it's the cure for everything you want healed and cured. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, to conclude this statement, this beautiful statement of Sheikh Ibn Bazm, we'll review it at the end, so those who came afterwards can hear the whole statement. Sheikh Ibn Bazm then he went on to say ومن حفظ وقته بصحبة الأخيار و وبالبعد عن صحبة الغافلين والأشرار يطيب قلبه ويلين. He concluded by saying, whoever preserves his time with accompanying good people and maintaining a distance away from the heedless ones, those who don't care to follow the rules and the evil doers, then his heart will become good and soft. Abu Huraira, he narrates that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, الرجل على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالف. This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, the Prophet وسلم, he said, a man follows the religion of his friend. You may think you don't. You may think you're not going to do what he does or believe what he believes or say what he says. It's proven time and time again. You're a fool if you think that it won't. A person follows the religion of their friend, the ways of their friend, the actions and speech of their friend, so each one should consider who they befriend. This doesn't mean don't be nice to everyone, don't be man, don't, don't have good manners with everyone, don't be kind with everyone, don't smile at everyone, no, relax. You still carry them on because part of your deen is good manners, good character, 
that you smile at the people, that you're kind and respectful. This is a must. But be careful who you befriend, who you trust with your, your, your words or your, your secrets, who you tell things to, who you share things with, who you hang out with, because it's been proven. You hang around someone who cusses and swears, you're going to start cussing and swearing. I don't care how righteous you are. It's proven time and time again. You will follow the ways, even if you don't intend to. It will get you. I'll never forget a brother who told me, I'm going with this brother because he can, insists on going to these bad places, and I just want to be there to protect him from it. Who do you think fell into it worse than the friend he was trying to protect? The one who went. Be mindful who you befriend, because you will end up following their ways. Allah says, وَصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهًا وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ تُرِيدُ زِينَةُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا تُتِعْ مَنْ أَخْفَلْنَا قَلْبُهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبْعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرَقًا Allah says in Surah Al-Kahf, what means? And keep yourself, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is a command for all of the Muslims, all of the believers, may Allah make us from them. Keep yourself patiently with those who call on their Lord. Befriend those who are constantly making dua. Those who turn to Allah when in need, when needing help, when seeking aid. Your companions who remember their Lord with glorifying Allah, praising them, doing righteous deeds. Morning and afternoon, let these be your friends, your close friends, who you hang out with in your free time, seeking Allah's face, and let not your eyes overlook them. Why would you overlook them? Because you're desiring the pomp, the glitter of this life. So you overlook these friends who you know will help keep you on the right, keep you doing good, keep you doing the halal, keep you on a path that will be, will be one pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, earning Allah's pleasure. But you overlook them. Because you want the pomp, the glitter of what the other people have. So you turn away from those who would help you protect your deen. Desiring the pomp and the glitter of the life of this world and obey not him whose heart we have made heedless of our rem- remembrance, one who follows his own lusts and whose affair or deeds has been lost. And Abu and, and Abi Ahwas and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal, Akthiru dhikr Allahi azza wa jal, wa la alayka. أن لا تصحب أن لا تصحب أحدا إلا من عانك على ذكر الله عز وجل. أبو الأحوص نريد أبو الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه said remember Allah Almighty often you must not accompany anyone unless they help you remember Allah often that when you say I'll see you tomorrow they say insha Allah to you so you remember to say insha Allah someone who when you sneeze and you go, man, huh. And you, they, you don't say alhamdulillah, they tell you, actually, say alhamdulillah, so I can say alhamdulillah. One who you start eating, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you're eating, they come and say, actually, say bismillah. If you started eating bismillah, and the likes of these men, this is the friends, the companions, the ones who truly care about you. He may not have a lot of money to give you. He may not be able to help you out where you need help in your life that you think you need help. But he's there to support your deen, make you a Muslim who is good and sound, who will be successful on the day of resurrection. And Abi Musa radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mathal al-jaleez al-salih, wal-jaleez al-suq, ka mathal al-sahib al-misk, wa kir al-haddad, la ya'zamuka min sahib al-misk, amma tashtarihi, aw tajidu rihahu, wa kir al-haddad, yuhriku badanaka, aw thawbaka, an tajidu minhu rihan khabitha. أو تجد منه ريحا خبيثة رواه البخاري. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said what means the example of the good friend that sits with you and the bad friend or the evil friend that sits with you is like the seller of musk and the one who works in the furnace, the bellows, the blacksmith who's burning the the, the metal and it's making the the smoke and the stench. From the first one, the seller of musk, this is a good com- of musk, this is a good companion because just by being around him, you might buy some of it from him, then it's yours, you have a good scent. Or just being around him, that scent is going to come off, it's going to rub off on you. And then you have the one who's the bad friend, the evil friend or the evil companion. This one, when you're around them, it's like being some, amongst someone who's working amongst the furnaces and the bellows. They're either going to burn your clothes or your house, or at the very least, you're going to leave with a bad stench on yourself. This is the comparison of a good friend and a bad friend. Brothers, and, uh, if you can move forward, 
Barakallahu feekum, there's a lot of brothers standing in the back. Please move forward, fill in all the gaps, we'll work out the lines for the prayer, inshaAllah. This is why Allah showed us the end result of those who had wrong and bad, bad companions. <clears throat> and what they will say on the day of resurrection. وَيَوْمَ يَعُدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي أَتَّخَذْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا What Allah says, what means, and remember the day when the ظَالِمُ the wrongdoer, the oppressor, the polytheist, he will bite at his hands and say, Oh, woe to me, how horrible is my situation. Would that I had taken a path with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Would that I had followed his sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya waylata laytani lam attakhidu fulanan khalila. Woe to me, I wish I never took this person as a friend. Woe to me, I wish I never took such and such a person as a friend or a companion. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنَ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدِ إِزْجَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولَ He indeed, this friend, that I wish I never took as a friend, he did what? He led me astray from the reminder. He led me astray from the Qur'an. After it had come to me, and shaitan is ever a deserter to man in his hour of need. But at that point, we can't turn back. We can't say, oh Allah, let me live again, I won't take this dude as a friend, and I'll be friends with this person. Be mindful of who your friends are. All of this advice was so that the heart will become good and soft. Because what? Allah ain't going to look at your looks. You could be handsome or beautiful. Allah ain't going to look at your wealth. You could be the richest of people on the earth. Allah is going to look at your heart and your deeds. This is why يعني, we see from Prophet Ibrahim salam's response to the mushrikeen, he said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَا لَنْ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبِ الْسَلِيمِ That day of resurrection, my children, how many children I got, my wealth, it's not going to benefit me. The only thing that will benefit me is if I come to Allah with a pure and a clean heart. The hadith of Na'man ibn Bashir, at the end of it, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغًا إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ إِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ and it's one of those ones, again, that we should remind ourselves every day. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Indeed, in your body there is a morsel of flesh. If it is sound, the rest of you is going to be sound. You're going to do good. You will succeed in this life and the next. But if it's corrupt, the rest of you will be corrupt. You're going to be corrupt in this life, even if you're fooled to think you're successful. And you'll be corrupt in the next life. He said, Indeed, it's the heart. The heart matters. The heart is what matters. It's behind your knee, behind your intention, behind every good deed that you do. And sometimes behind every evil deed that you do. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, look at this statement of Shaykh Ibn Baz, where he said, and what we spoke about, مَنْ حَفِظَ وَقْتَهُ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَبِخْرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَبِصُحْبَةِ الْأَخْيَارِ وَالْبُعْضُ عَنْ صُحْبَةِ الْغَافِلِينَ وَالْأَشْرَارِ يُطِيبُ قَلْبَهُ وَيَنِينَ Again, to summarize, Shaykh Ibn Baz, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, whoever preserves his time with the remembrance of Allah, with the recitation of the Qur'an, with accompanying good people, with maintaining a distance away from those who are heedless of the laws of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and those who do evil, then his heart will become good and soft. If you do this, you will be successful on the day of resurrection, for the life that matters, the life that's forever, the life that's eternal, the Jannah that Allah prepared for the believers, the one, فِيهَا مَا لَعِينُ الرَّأْتِ وَلَا أُذِنُ سَمِعْتُ وَلَا خَطْرَ عَرَفَ بِالْأَشْرِ The Jannah that has what no eye has seen of beauty and things, what no ear has heard of sounds, and what can't even occur to the human heart. This is what's aligned in waiting. Allah make us from the Muttaqar. So let us remember this. Preserve your time with the Qur'an, with the remembrance of Allah, with good friends, good company. Alright? And staying away from those who are heedless and evil doing, so that the heart can become good, pure and soft. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, remember the time, you can never get it back. You can only regret. And we all have lifetimes of regret. But we're still breathing. We're still here. We're alive today, at least at this moment. There's time to remember Allah, to recite the Qur'an, to be in good company with one another. As we conclude, there's